We're starting to get some timbers. Yeah, I'm going to get one J and here we come right back. Right. Which this isn't a 1911 style, it, it's, it's a different style, but that is a, another option they have. And here's just the standard micro nine, which is a, which is a 1911 style without the palm safety. And then, <laughs> got some timbers in, not as many as I wish I had, but. This is the night Yes, sir. Joey had it. Yeah. Have you bought it? It's amazing. Yeah, it's really beautiful work. Mm -hmm. So, do you remember what model it was called? Like, they're usually like names like Raptor, or Ultra Carry, Custom Carry, Pro Carry. There's a lot of different names for Kimber. Do you, would you remember if you saw the picture? Would you remember possibly? No. Well, I was told about it. I didn't <laughs> see it. Let me go. Let me see what. Okay. These are beautiful. Cool. That's gorgeous. I love what he did. I met a bunch of posters that Monday. I'm scared. Horses finally starting to see these. These are gorgeous. I love this. I had one like this. <laughs> What's your favorite and why? Try this one. I think so too. That's just beautiful. My favorite one is one Yeah, that's what I like. It's that girl thing. I look at it aesthetically. It's like, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I just saw that too. Oh, this part right here. Lisa, I think you'll like this one here. Oh. Called the Amethyst. So it's, a, it's the same gun right here, but it's a custom. How is this on here? I don't even know. Like this. Like this. It's called an amethyst. Oh, gosh. Look at that. Yeah. I love that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a sapphire. Ah, that's my birthstone. So his question, what's the difference in kit? So a 45 is going to keep um, substantially more, and, and the more you shoot, the more you'll get used to that. Mm -hmm. um, right now you're shooting a 9 just fine. I think you can you can tolerate a 45, but it, it will be a, a much much more difference. You'll, you'll notice the difference of the kick for sure. Okay. So you'll have to just really keep a, a firm, good grip, good grip and, and keep your wrist locked. You don't want to get, if you start, if a gun starts kicking too much for what your wrists are ready for, and that's called limp wristing, and that's how you start having jamming problems like stovepipe jams and, and malfunctions and, and double feeds is how you get all that. So you don't really want to be prepared for that before. I mean, in the way you're shooting, I think it's fine, but nines are a little funner to shoot, kick less, and ammo is generally a little cheaper. So 
I wouldn't stray away from the idea of a 95 as you yeah. Unless you just want to stay up to a 45. The 45 has much more deadly force, uh, more knockdown power, a bit bigger diameter bullet. So there's reasoning for a 45, but not necessarily saying you have to do it. Right. I think a lot of people we kill with a so I wouldn't underestimate that at all. Oh, yeah. But um, this is just a, the Kimber Special Editions that they do. They do a Rose Gold, a Hero Custom, which is the boot campaign, a Camp Guard, which has a Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation on it, the Sapphire, and the Amethyst. And then there's, I mean, there's all kinds of Kimbers. Um, we have a Raptor down there to show you what the Raptor looks like. They do a, a Ultra Raptor or just a Raptor 2. Uh, that's the one I was looking at. So those are the Raptors. They're probably the most popular um, Kimber. Everybody likes the Raptor. Um, Aegis is another great gun. The Aegis Elite Pro comes with a with a Vortex um, Venom Red Dot on it. That's another really good top seller. What's your top? The Aegis Elite Pro offers a stock. It's a 1911. So if you like the idea of having a Red Dot, that one's already cut out and he's with the Vortex Red Dot. That might be something you kind of keep in mind. That's a very popular gun. That's perfect in every way. That is. Do you have one of those? I don't at the moment. So we are actually a Kimber Master Dealer and usually have tons of options. But back in, I want to say it was probably April of 2020 during the, the COVID uh, restrictions. New York actually made Kimber shut their factory down. So they are shut down for, for quite a while. Um, I think around 12 or 13 weeks. And during that time, they, they couldn't get it together with, with New York, so they actually moved their whole facility to Troy, Alabama. They were in Yonkers, New York, and now they're in Troy, Alabama. So that moving process and being shut down for so long took a, took a little bit of a, um, a hit on them to get product moving. So now they're in Troy, everything's doing good, and stuff is starting to come back. But we, um, we have a great rep named Matt Kimber, and um, he keeps us in the know on everything, and we keep a lot of stuff on back order. And, Every day we receive Kimber products. So I mean, we we got six micro nines in uh, a couple days ago. Uh, yesterday we got six of the nightfall micro nines in. We got the Raptor. In. So so things are starting to come in. So the, the biggest difference in what I have now, the biggest difference in a true 1911 and these guns are. These are just modeled to look like a 1911. Notice this gun just appears to have that same look, yeah. but they're they're not the exact 1911 replica because they don't have a palm safety. Okay. So that palm safety yeah, is something that you have to have engaged in order to, for that gun to fire. So, so obviously this one, gun's empty. If you cannot fire, even with this gun, so there's safety, this is on fire. If you don't have that engaged, it will not go off. So you actually have to have this part engaged to fire the trigger. So that's a true 1911 body style. Yeah. So a lot of companies replicate 1911s in their own way, or like Kimber just wants to, want to have the look, just that classy 1911 look, not necessarily have to have a palm safety. So the Micro 9s, like I said, they're just, they're not a 1911, they just kind of have the, the, the beaver tail or the dovetail, and they have the actual single action, you have to actually cock them and, and leave them on safety is how you would actually carry it. So that gun is designed for that idea without a palm safety. So that's the biggest difference in, in Kimber's smaller guns versus their actual 1911 style guns. Um, this is the Kimber Raptor. It's in a 45. They also make this gun in a short barrel like this, this size, and a longer barrel. And um, appreciate, man. And that's, that would be that's the idea of, of the different links. So there's a there's an ultra carry, a pro carry, and a custom carry. It's kind of Kimber's sizings, and that's just basically a short barrel, a little bit longer, a little bit longer. So, and in their 1911s, they offer. 45, 9, and 10 millimeter is basically the, the rounds they cover. And some some options might only offer one caliber, and then the next option might offer all three, then another option might just offer a 9 and a 45. And so it, you just have to kind of know like what caliber you're going with first, then we can look at what options Kimber has in that in that um, realm of, of caliber specific. So um, this, is a, this is a SHOT Show special, I think, of the last year, the all black. And they've done these as well, the Nightfalls. Uh, they kept this in catalog for this year, as far as I understand, because it's still being produced. Um, usually, SHOT Show specials is just something they release at SHOT Show in Vegas, and they'll say, like, this year, 2019, 2020, we're just going to have this model. Or not 
as an extra. They'll still have their regular right. inventory, but this will be like a special, like, you know, they'll have this all black instead of being like a two-tone color. I don't know if I have a two-tone yeah, two down here as well. A lot of Kimbers that you see that kind of everyday Kimbers will be in what's called a two-tone, so silver receiver and a black slide, and then the rosewood grips. This one here actually has has a laser grip, which is crimson trace laser. Wow, that's cool. So you just just by grabbing that right there, the laser comes off just, just by the gripping the gun. Oh, cool. So that you know, Kimber has some of those. They also sell grips for any of them. If you want to laser on this or anything, you can do that. Of course, it's kind of expensive, but the best way to do it is, is when you order the gun. Yeah. Already so tell me about this one. That's really pretty. I yeah. Like so it. this is the Micro Nine Kimber. They also make this in a 380, it's just called the Micro. Micro being 380 and Micro 9 being 9 millimeter. They make this in um, all stainless, which is this guy. Uh, they make it in two-tone. They make it in the Amethyst, the Sapphire, a Bel Air, a Rose Gold. Um, there's a few others. I'm trying to think of all the different colors, but the, the Micro 9 two-tone, which is this one with the Crimson Trace grip, is probably one of the most popular Micro 9s on the market um, for Kimber. Um, so this gun's 9 millimeter. It holds 7 plus 1, mm -hmm. so it has the extended mag. Uh, the other option is to get the flat mag, which is just holds 6 rounds. Um, you turn your, These are Crimson Trace laser grips. You turn the laser on just with this little button here, which is best just to leave it on all the time because it doesn't actually turn on until you grip this button here. Mm -hmm. So once you make a grip on that gun, you're going to shoot as soon as you squeeze those on the wall up there. Yeah. Turn that go, it goes off. Squeeze, it comes on, let go. So, super simple to run. Um, and these guns are, are going to be a little different than your SIG 365 in the idea that they are single action only. So, you have to cock this hammer to, to shoot it and obviously have one in the chamber. Um, and then this is your safety here. This just has a, a thumb safety that you drop down. So. If you are carrying this gun to be the most prepared, you would want to carry it locked and loaded is where that term comes from because it's locked and it's loaded. So in the event of something happening, you would pull, drop your thumb. Notice I took the safety off when I did that just by dropping the thumb and you're, and you're ready to go with, with the laser on. So that's how these guns operate. This isn't a gun you can just, you can't put one in the chamber, let the hammer down and then just squeeze because nothing will happen. It has to actually have that single action mode. Double action is where you pull the trigger and it pulls the strike and fire and hits the hits the primer. Where this is a single action mode, so you have to actually pull the hammer first, and then you can actually shoot the gun. And then once that happens, the slide comes back. Let me drop the magazine. So if you're going to actually shoot this gun, you you would pull the slide would come back, drop the casing out, put a new round in, and notice the hammer stayed back. You let go, pull, come back before. Go so, so that's each how, time you have to do that. Well, no, yeah. this gun would do that by itself. It would be the oh. pressure of the nine millimeter round leaving would open that chamber and, and let it down. But when that slide comes open by itself, it will go ahead and cock the hammer every time. Oh. So that's just the first shot. The first shot. Yeah. So okay. otherwise, if you're doing this, there's no pressure to make the slide come back to to cock the hammer. So that first shot, you'd actually have to cock it. After that, it's just boom, 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 because the slide is doing that part for you. Because okay. when that slide comes back, watch the slide push that hammer down. Oh, so it's yeah. putting a new shell in now, coming back and, and ready to shoot again. That oh, that's cool. So that's how a single action gun works, which is a 1911 style. Or double actions, as long as you've got one in the chamber, you can carry it on safety and pull it off this boom, boom, boom. You don't have to pull the hammer back first. Right. Okay. okay. So that's how, that's how the idea of all 1911s work. That's really pretty. It's a great little gun. I love that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that word. That is just That's called rosewood grips. That's beautiful. And if you're wanting to go to like a bigger frame, then that's when you would actually jump into the 1911 frames. And then barrel length is just, they're all going to have the same receiver in a sense. Like they're all going to be at least that big. But then you just get different barrel lengths depending on what you want. The longer the barrel, the, the more accurate the gun is, per se. Yeah. So if you're doing a lot of target shooting and stuff, most people want the longer barrel they can get. So like this Ivor Johnson, not a Kimber, it's its own brand in Ivor Johnson. Oh, it has wow. a much longer barrel and it, it's ported so it helps keep the barrel rise down for when it, so it doesn't come up so much until you get back on target quicker. 
Dalton. So that's the Ivory Dalton oh. Eagle Egg Sales, but that's cool. That's a cool game. And it's a nine? It's a 45. It's a 45. Oh, wow. <coughs> Golly, that's gorgeous. Okay, so now this is the girl in me. <laughs> yeah, just, it's pretty. That's just blingy and shiny and cool. And I have another gun. Wow. And a Magnum Reaser, actually, auto ordnance. It's a 1911A1. This is a case hardened. So they have actually tempered this metal to get the, the kind of oil look. Yeah. So that's called case hardened. That's beautiful. Yeah. 1911s are probably the most sought after gun just for the classy look. Yeah. And then, so obviously there's tons of companies that that make 1911s in their own accord. I mean, they they all have, you know, they want to do this to that or that to this. It's just different grips, different, different um, bluings or stampings or colors or... Now, how did they get this really pretty gold thing? It's probably electroplating, but I'm not 100% yeah, sure. Yeah, that's really a gorgeous color. Yeah. And I love this. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's gorgeous. 1911s are my favorite gun. Um, they're just they're just pretty. I mean, they're beautiful. They've been around since 1911. I mean, honestly, before that, they were you know, designing the gun like in 1908, 9, 10. And they actually released it in 1911 when they won the contract to the um, to the, the military in in America. So that's how the gun became the gun. It was the number one carry gun for, for years in the military. And then obviously they're still making them today. They're just they're never going to die. They're a great gun. That's a really pretty one too. I like the purple one, the amethyst. The amethyst. That's a really pretty one. So between these two, what's your favorite and why? Between these two? Mm -hmm. So I would probably go with the Micro 9. I actually own a, a Micro 9 um, called the Woodland Knight. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of like a, a gray and a tungsten color with the green handles. And it has a laser grip on it like this as well. Mm -hmm. I just like a 9 millimeter. It's just, it's just what I like shooting. I have a lot of 9 ammo. So I'm not a big 45 fan and I'm not saying anything bad about 45s. There's plenty of guys out there that love 45s. I just no reason. Absolutely. <laughs> no reason. Yeah, I know that you guys will, I like argue, that. will That's argue a good that, thing. but it's, I mean, each to their own. Everybody likes their own caliber. 45s are a little, you know, they kick a little harder, they're a little more expensive to shoot, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's completely yeah, necessary. It's I like that. These are the, the two top sellers of the Micro 9s for sure. Oh, yeah, I just now noticed that. You're right. Okay. Yeah, so all three of these guns here are Micro 9s. Okay. Just different different colors. They're all a nine millimeter micro nine, same body style. You'll notice this one has a little bit different grip. This is a new grip they started doing in the past couple of years. Okay. And it's just it's just to help keep your fingers kind of split okay. and, and a comfortable grip. So um, and they take them with the high vis um, fiber optic sights on them. Mm. So and this is called an Evo. This is a Kimber's Evo, which is kind of like a it's kind of like a, a hybrid between a Micro 9 and like a kind of like your 365 or something because it has a, a double action pull. So you can actually just squeeze the trigger there just like a striker fire instead of having to pull the hammer back. So I, I will say these guns are, are cool, they're pretty, but they're not as popular just because they're limited on how many rounds they carry. They only carry seven. When you start comparing those to 365s and some of the guns I showed you last time you were here, it's just, it doesn't compare in a, in a way that because of pet capacity is the mm -hmm. biggest deal, so. Yeah. So these two are identical mm -hmm. other than the color? Yep, just a black wow. slide and, and of course this one has a laser grip and this one right. doesn't. And you can oh, get them yeah. either way, but. I like that. I'm blessed with a pretty good brain, I guess. You are, <laughs> truly blessed. I retain about everything I hear or study or read. <laughs> it's just, I am. Wow. So this one has the laser grip? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I could always leave it on. Yeah, always. Mine, you know, I mind even in my safe right now, and it's probably on. I never turn it off because mm -hmm. that's just if you really just didn't want your laser to come on when you gripped it, because that laser is not going to come on until that button is actually activated. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's an on and off switch. You can't just push it and leave it on. So that only happens on on pressure activation. So. And if you just really did not want it on, say you're training to not be reliant on your laser, you can actually turn it off. That way you can focus on using your sights because there can come a time when you pull your gun in an incident and need to use it and your batteries are dead. 
you can't say, hang on a second, I gotta run to Walmart <laughs> and get some batteries because I'm not very good without a laser. So if you want to turn it off and train like that, I suggest that. I suggest everybody to train without a laser and then not be so reliant on it. But in the event, you know, nine times out of ten the battery will probably be just fine, but it's just you have to think about those things like what if my battery does die one day and I don't want to be completely reliant on a, a laser beam. So yeah. well, So you can true. turn it on or off just to, for that incident. So okay. Yeah, I'll let you feel that and yeah. see if you like it. Wow, and it activates easier than mm -hmm. my yeah, super other easy. one. Yeah, Yeah, because my other one, sometimes I find myself, and I love it, I really, really super am in love with my other gun. Um, but the other one, sometimes, like, I don't know if you notice at the range, where I sit there and I'm kind of going, Getting the right grip on it, uh -huh, and that'll all just come with training. You'll, yeah. you'll just you'll, it'll become second nature. But this one, it's just yep, super easy. It's already Crimson Trace is a great company when it comes to lasers on handguns or anything. They're, they are high. They're high. They're much higher than most companies. Um, very expensive, but they're they're worth their weight in gold. Man, I love that. Okay, how much is this one? So this gun is seven twenty nine plus tax. That's um. We're in a different tier than most timber dealers because yeah, um, we're a master dealer, so we get a break on on our prices because we order so much. But of course, right now it seems like we're not a master dealer because we don't have much. But um, oh, that's because everybody's buying them, yeah. and who wouldn't? <laughs> right. So it's it's hard to get inventory with, with any company right now, but we try hard. On years like this, do you have you know how I find uh, my 365? I have the site on top. The mm -hmm. Do you have one on yours like that, or you just leave it I alone? don't. So, and I'm sure there is there is probably a plate that somebody makes that would, you're talking about to have an actual red dot on top, a yeah. reflex. But you wouldn't need that. Would you? you wouldn't not necessarily, that. but I mean, that's what I was saying about the Aegis Elite. I don't know if it's still up there or not, but the Aegis Elite actually comes with a cutout for that plate, for that reflex sight to sit on that plate securely and then be bolted down with two screws. So the other option on most guns that don't have the actual cutout so they will actually mill this out. The other option is to take off the back side, which it slides out of the dovetail, and you slide a plate in there that basically is just, it looks like the side, but it slides in and it has a long plate here that has holes in it to screw different red dots down. So you can go that route as well. It's not as accurate or, or um, sometimes you can run out of room when you're trying to side them in. But, but it is an option. I'm sure somebody probably makes a plate for Kimber sites that slides right in there. You know what my daddy would have said? If you're good, you don't need it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And we always did. Yeah, I mean, we, we try to always have the micro 92 tones of the laser here. It's just one of the most popular and the best way as far as for the money, just the, the best option. And you know, you can actually, like, you can, you can set that up without mm -hmm. much effort, really. And so then, just to give you an idea, like if you, so this gun here is six nineteen, like the difference of hundred and ten dollars to have that crimson trace laser. Mm -hmm. If you did, and some people do this, and I don't, I don't understand why. Mm -hmm. They'll look at these two guns like, Whew, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one for now, a little cheaper, and then they'll come back in a month or two and say, Hey, I, I decided I want to order grips for that, and then they're three, they're about three hundred dollars. So pay 110 now, don't pay 300 later. Right, so, I was going to say. Yeah, it's best, that? anytime Crimson Trace is offered through a gun and you're even remotely thinking about going laser, yeah. it's best to do it then, not later, because yeah. Crimson Trace is expensive. So. Yes. I love that. I love how easy that is. Because you are right. It's just mm -hmm. like as soon as I even just get, yeah. I don't even have to try. Yeah, it shouldn't be something you even think about at all. Just, she'll just come on by itself. That's really nice. I am sitting here going, I am so addicted to your store and all of your toys. Well, Laramie <laughs> always says there's assets and there's liabilities, and guns are assets. So. That is true. That's just cool. I love that. That's Camry nice. Micro 9 2 tone with the Crimson Trace laser grips.